V. I. Lenin, The Urgent Tasks of Our Movement Written early November 1900 Published in December 1900 in Iskra No. 1 Russian social democracy has repeatedly declared the immediate political tasks of a Russian working-class party to be the overthrow of the autocracy, the achievement of political liberty. This was enunciated over 15 years ago by the representatives of Russian social democracy, the members of the Emancipation of Labor Group. It was affirmed two and a half years ago by the representatives of the Russian Social Democratic Organizations that, in the spring of 1898, founded the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. Despite these repeated declarations, however, the question of the political tasks of social democracy in Russia is prominent again today. Many representatives of our movement express doubt as to the correctness of the above-mentioned solution of the question. It is claimed that the economic struggle is of predominant importance. The political tasks of the proletariat are pushed into the background, narrowed down and restricted, and it is even said that to speak of forming an independent political party in Russia is merely to repeat somebody else's words. That the workers should carry on only the economic struggle and leave politics to the intelligentsia in alliance with the liberals. The latest profession of the new faith, the notorious credo, amounts to a declaration that the Russian proletariat has not yet come of age and to a complete rejection of the social democratic program. Rabochaya Misel, particularly in its separate supplement, takes practically the same attitude. Russian social democracy is passing through a period of vacillation and doubt bordering on self-negation. On the one hand, the working class movement is being sundered from socialism. The workers are being helped to carry on the economic struggle but nothing or next to nothing is done to explain to them the socialist aims and the political tasks of the movement as a whole. On the other hand, socialism is being sundered from the labor movement. Russian socialists are again beginning to talk more and more about the struggle against the government having to be carried on entirely by the intelligentsia because the workers confine themselves to the economic struggle. In our opinion, the ground has been prepared for this sad state of affairs by three circumstances. First, in their early activity, Russian social democrats restricted themselves merely to work in propaganda circles. When we took up agitation among the masses, we were not always able to restrain ourselves from going to the other extreme. Secondly, in our early activity, we often had to struggle for our right to existence against the Narodnaya Volia adherents, who understood by politics an activity isolated from the working class movement and who reduced politics purely to conspiratorial struggle. In rejecting this sort of politics, the Social Democrats went to the extreme of pushing politics entirely into the background. Thirdly, working in the isolation of small local worker circles, the Social Democrats did not devote sufficient attention to the necessity of organizing a revolutionary party which would combine all the activities of the local groups and make it possible to organize the revolutionary work on correct lines. The predominance of isolated work is naturally connected with the predominance of the economic struggle. These circumstances resulted in concentration on one side of the movement only. The economist trend, that is, if we can speak of it as a trend, has attempted to elevate this narrowness to the rank of a special theory and has tried to utilize for this purpose the fashionable Bernsteinism and the fashionable criticism of Marxism, which peddles old bourgeois ideas under a new label. These attempts alone have given rise to the danger of a weakening of connection between the Russian working class movement and Russian social democracy, the vanguard in the struggle for political liberty. The most urgent task of our movement is to strengthen this connection.
Social democracy is the combination of the working class movement and socialism. Its task is not to serve the working class movement passively at each of its separate stages, but to represent the interests of the movement as a whole, to point out to this movement its ultimate aim and its political tasks, and to safeguard its political and ideological independence. Isolated from social democracy, the working class movement becomes petty and inevitably becomes bourgeois, in waging only the economic struggle, the working class loses its political independence. It becomes the tail of other parties and betrays the great principle, the emancipation of the working classes must be conquered by the working classes themselves. In every country, there has been a period in which the working class movement existed apart from socialism, each going its own way. And in every country, this isolation has weakened both socialism and the working class movement. Only the fusion of socialism with the working class movement has in all countries created a durable basis for both. But in every country, this combination of socialism and the working class movement has evolved historically in unique ways in accordance with the prevailing conditions of time and place. In Russia, the necessity for combining socialism and the working class movement was in theory long ago proclaimed, but it is only now being carried into practice. It is a very difficult process, and there is, therefore, nothing surprising in the fact that it is accompanied by vacillations and doubts. What lessons can be learned from the past? The entire history of Russian socialism has led to the condition in which the most urgent task is the struggle against the autocratic government and the achievement of political liberty. Our socialist movement concentrated itself, so to speak, upon the struggle against the autocracy. On the other hand, history has shown that the isolation of socialist thought from the vanguard of the working class is greater in Russia than in other countries and that if this state of affairs continues, the revolutionary movement in Russia is doomed to impotence. From this condition emerges the task which the Russian social democracy is called upon to fulfill, to imbue the masses of the proletariat with the ideas of socialism and political consciousness, and to organize a revolutionary party inseparably connected with the spontaneous working class movement. Russian social democracy has done much in this direction, but much more still remains to be done. With the growth of the movement, the field of activity for Russian social democrats becomes wider, the work becomes more varied, and an increasing number of activists in the movement will concentrate their efforts upon the fulfillment of various special tasks which the daily needs of propaganda and agitation bring to the fore. This phenomena is quite natural and is inevitable, but it causes us to be particularly concerned with preventing these special activities and methods of struggle from becoming ends in themselves and with preventing preparatory work from being regarded as the main and sole activity. Our principal and fundamental task is to facilitate the political development and the political organization of the working class. Those who push this task into the background, who refuse to subordinate to it all the special tasks and particular methods of struggle, are following a false path and causing serious harm to the movement. And it is being pushed into the background, firstly, by those who call upon revolutionaries to employ only the forces of isolated conspiratorial circles cut off from the working class movement and the struggle against the government. It is being pushed into the background, secondly, by those who restrict the content and scope of political propaganda, agitation, and organization, who think it is fit and proper to treat the workers to politics only at exceptional moments in their lives, only on festive occasions, who too solicitously substitute demands for partial concessions from the autocracy for the political struggle against the autocracy 
and who do not go to sufficient lengths to ensure that these demands for partial concessions are raised to the status of a systematic, implacable struggle of a revolutionary working-class party against the autocracy. Organize, Rabacea Misel keeps repeating to the workers in all keys, and all the adherents of the economist trend echo the cry. We, of course, wholly endorse this appeal, but we will not fail to add, organize, but not only in mutual benefit societies, strike funds, and workers' circles. Organize also in a political party. Organize for the determined struggle against the autocratic government and against the whole of capitalist society. Without such organizations, the proletariat will never rise to the class-conscious struggle. Without such organization, the working-class movement is doomed to impotency. With the aid of nothing but funds and study circles and mutual benefit societies, the working class will never be able to fulfill its great historical mission to emancipate itself and the whole of the Russian people from political and economic slavery. Not a single class in history has achieved power without producing its political leaders, its prominent representatives able to organize a movement and lead it. And the Russian working class has already shown that it can produce such men and women. The struggle which has developed so widely during the past five or six years has revealed the great potential revolutionary power of the working class. It has shown that the most ruthless government persecution does not diminish, but, on the contrary, increases the number of workers who strive towards socialism, towards political consciousness, and towards the political struggle. The Congress which our comrades held in 1898 correctly defined our tasks and did not merely repeat other people's words, did not merely express the enthusiasm of intellectuals. We must set to work resolutely to fulfill these tasks, placing the question of the party program, organization, and tactics as the order of the day. We have already set forth our views on the fundamental postulates of our program, and, of course, this is not the place to develop them in detail. We propose to devote a series of articles and forthcoming issues to questions of organization, which are among the most burning problems confronting us. In this respect, we lag considerably behind the old workers in the Russian revolutionary movement. We must frankly admit this defect and exert all our efforts to devise methods of greater secrecy in our work, to propagate systematically the proper methods of work, the proper methods of deluding the gendarme and of evading the snares of the police. We must train people who will devote the whole of their lives, not only their spare evenings, to the revolution. We must help build up an organization large enough to permit the introduction of a strict division of labor in the various forms of our work. Finally, with regard to questions of tactics, we shall confine ourselves to the following. Social democracy does not tie its hands. It does not restrict its activities to some one preconceived plan or method of political struggle. It recognizes all methods of struggle, provided they correspond to the forces at the disposal of the party and facilitate the achievement of the best results possible under the given conditions. If we have a strongly organized party, a single strike may turn into a political demonstration, into a political victory over the government. If we have a strongly organized party, a revolt in a single locality may grow into a victorious revolution. We must bear in mind that the struggles with the government for partial demands and the gain of certain concessions are merely light skirmishes with the enemy, encounters between outposts, whereas the decisive battle is still to come. Before us, in all its strength, towers the enemy fortress which is raining shot and shell upon us, mowing down our best fighters. We must capture this fortress, and we will capture it, if we unite all the forces of the awakening proletariat with all the forces of the Russian revolutionaries into one party which will attract all that is vital and honest in Russia. 
Only then will the great prophecy of the Russian worker revolutionary Pyotr Alexeyev be fulfilled. The muscular arm of the working millions will be lifted, and the yoke of despotism guarded by the soldiers' bayonets will be smashed to atoms.